Hi everybody and welcome to my shop and I'm going to continue working on this radio you see here but first I have to show you something yeah, it's not that it's it's this and that's my playbook that's what I use as my video camera when I shoot my videos and that's why it's so shaky at times because uh, you know it's just a it's a uh, it's just a tablet And even though you see the red light flashing, uh, it's actually uh, hung. There it is, it's hung. It says turning off playbook, but it's said that now for 10 hours. I was on the phone with uh, Blackberry, and after going through a series of attempts to get it to work again, they've given me an RMA number. So it's going back and I'm gonna get another one and unfortunately what's on this one is gonna be lost and what's on there is three videos sorry to say um, one of them I can replicate the other one is work done on the radio we're about to work on a game which I'm gonna replicate now more or less and the last one is uh, a lost opportunity and it was a pretty cool um, video or it's a it was a video of a pretty cool record player I was working on yesterday too bad so we're gonna st <coughs> start this guy up I have the signal generator set up to feed into the antenna just over here very simple just clip leads nothing special going on uh, my signal generator output is set uh, relatively high and uh, I already know that this sets sensitivity seems to be off, or or is it something else that's that's causing what's happening? Um, the band we're going to be on is the broadcast band, of course. But this radio, interestingly enough, the broadcast band is only listed in meters, which of course I'm terribly unfamiliar with. I mean, I know the ham radio bands, you know, and the that kind of stuff, 40 meters, 20 meters, all that. I'm comfortable with that. But I'm not comfortable with listening to, uh, let's say, what we would normally call 1010 and, and calling it, well, you know what, it wouldn't be too far off of, uh, of 1010 still. But uh, So enough of that confusing babble. I will get this radio switched on. There we go. And there you can see the uh, the light coming on here, and I've got the uh, current limiter on. I don't really need to. But I I have it. I just like to start guys up a little slower. Okay, now he's up at full voltage, which tonight is 118 volts, and we should be hearing something any moment. That's not too good. Boy, that's uh, okay. All the same crazy things are going on that were going on earlier. So let's let's try and take them apart one at a time. First one is this scratchy noise when I tune it. Okay, so I suspect that the capacitor is responsible for that. I have already lubricated the uh, bearings in it, but it's still making uh, noise. Now the next one is an, an, a real noise, that's the noise of this thing. It's squeaking, which is actually improved from how it was before. Sorry I did this on the now lost forever video. 
the pointer was riding on the back of the glass at the top here. That even though it's got some kind of bumper bumper deal in there, a little plastic cap, it still was making a terrible squeak. You know, and it's because it's a long rod dragging on glass. It's bound to, to end up, you know, doing that kind of thing when you and getting that horrible, horrible sound. Well, it's no longer dragging on the glass, but now it's dragging on the piece in behind. I'm not even sure that's any better. The situation. Well, that's where that noise is coming from. Now the other thing is the you know actually what it's receiving. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that's computer hash coming from something who knows what anymore. Could be anything. Could be anything in my house. And uh, but there's a characteristic to it, or a secondary sound, or or maybe maybe a secondary quality. And to me, it, it's a little hard to hear now, but in the other conditions, as we tune around, it become much more obvious that it sounds like the radio is getting close to breaking into oscillation, or it's a regenerative um, type sound. So, sorry, let me aim this at least here. See if we can get that to really come clear to you. it sounds like that that's a pretty weird sound frankly I don't think I've ever heard a radio do that but here on one side what it sounds like and on the other side as if this side has regeneration but I figured that out I've never seen anything like that okay now another sound as I, as I tune up okay there's a whole bunch of more sounds here to try to deal with. Okay, let's stick with the kind of tonal, tonal or musical sort of sounds. As you can hear a, a low tone or a wobbly, warbly tone. As I move this up, goes up in frequency. Not anymore here. Yeah, that, that sudden whistle was my signal generator. That's where it's so we ignore that. That's a good tone. Yeah. But you can hear the tone is there. And now it, now it's gone. So you know these are weird things to me. Uh, Let's, let's get it on the signal generator here. Okay, I'm going to set this down to... Just setting my signal generator properly here. Okay. I, I don't know what to think here. Got my signal generator. Oh, I know what's going on. I'll take that back. Okay, let's hear that again and watch the watch the dial. Well, I think this is a pretty interesting thing. Now, I got this tuned roughly in the middle of the band. Um, you know, it's in meters, so I, I don't know what it is. And if I tune my signal generator in the middle, let's watch the numbers here. 
and listen. There it is. So it's about there. It's about it's about uh, 893 on the AM band. But look at this. This is interesting. Watch. I just keep going down. Down. Way down. Just off the bottom of the AM band. So, I think that's pretty curious. The the off-band signal is actually louder. So, you know, if that's an image coming through the radio, it's actually more powerful than the actual intended signal, if you follow what I'm saying. Same signal generator, same output level. So I think that's kind of curious.